Hi everyone. It is uh, Tuesday, September 8th, and it is a crazy cold day here in Denver. So greetings to all family and friends of Augustana Lutheran Church. I am Sue Ann Gusenkamp, Augustana's Faith Community Nurse, coming to you live with the topic today of Hymns for Now, Throwback Songs. Hear these words from John 13. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Thank you for giving me the morning. Thank you for every day that's new. Thank you that I can know my worries can be cast on you. So just the other day, the lyrics of that song just popped into my head and I started singing it. It's a song from the past, a throwback song. Have you heard this song before? It's actually from this book, Hymns for Now, one, that is a song from 1960, the book is from 1967. It was written for a Walther League and it was written in Chicago. Now, if you grew up in the LCMS, the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod, like I did, you know about Walther League. And you also know about CPH, which is the publishing house that published this little songbook. However, when I actually Googled that song, Thank You For Giving Me The Morning, here's what I found out. Very interesting. That simple little song is a song of thankfulness of German origin. No wonder it's on my hard drive. And the original title was Danke für diesen guten Morgen. The German words and the tune were by German theologian and church musician and songwriter Martin Gotthard Schneider. They were written in 1961 for a competition for new sacred songs in the jazz or pop genres. And this song, Thank You For Giving Me The Morning, won first prize in the competition and later spent, believe it or not, six weeks in the German pop charts. However, most recent recordings of this song suggest that the German song is mainly a child song. Well, I learned it as a teen. It's still in my mind and brain and heart, obviously. It's on my hard drive, my memory hard drive. I really do remember singing this song back in the 60s, which was a rather turbulent time in our country, singing it with my youth group um, during my teen years. Now, the subtitle for this book, interestingly enough, on the inside says, A Portfolio for Good, Bad, or Rotten Times. Hmm, aren't these now times quite a mixture of good, bad, and rotten? What's this day like for you today? This is a good, bad, rotten, or mixed day. Well, listen to the introduction that this little songbook starts with. It says, When a song grows out of the life of common people, it's called a folk song. More often than not, folk songs happened when life became very hard for a person, and singing about it was the only thing they could do. Our Christian tradition says that's true. Most of the psalms we attribute to David when he was hard-pressed and quite cried out in poetry and song. And so we see the Psalms in the Bible like that. The rich liturgical heritage with us for centuries emerged out of a time when the church was being persecuted. The agonies of the Reformation gave birth to new freedoms and people sang about them. Most favorite, some of our most favorite chor chorales are from that time period. And it's happening again. New songs are cropping up everywhere. Well, is that happening now as well? Interestingly enough, right? So, let's see what's next here. Oh, yeah, this book also has lots of spirituals in them, which we know grew out of many people's experience with slavery. Shalom for the Hebrews, Lord of the Dance, We Shall Overcome, and Amen out of um, Amer African American slavery. Recently, I watched a film about an Irish group of fishermen who sang traditional sea shanties. 
Indeed, a variety of folk songs grew out of people's experiences and have been passed down through many generations, mainly by oral tradition. Well, in 1969, Hymns for Now 2 came out. It was published, and it includes many favorite folk songs like Kumbaya, Simple Gifts, and Down by the Riverside. Guys, I've held on to these two little Hymns for Now books for over 50 years, if you can believe that. So it might be appropriate to call these throwback songs. Singing these hymns, however, are still relevant today in 2020. We have times of turbulence and challenge now as well. So a recent exhibit at the Denver Art Museum, the Norman Rockwell exhibit, reflected on four freedoms that President Franklin Delano Roosevelt proclaimed in 1941. And many of the displays in the exhibit posed this question, has anything really changed? As I read about folk songs and remember these songs from the 60s in these two books, I ask myself that same question, has anything really changed? President Roosevelt envisioned a better future founded on four freedoms, four essential human freedoms, some traditional and some new. The four freedoms he outlined were freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom from want, and freedom from fear. Has anything really changed? It was a really thought-provoking exhibit, and quite surprising, actually, because I've always associated Norman Rockwell with God, Mom, and Apple Pie. But this exhibit demonstrated the power of art and culture. I hope you had a chance to look at this profound look at American culture. One of my favorite songs from the book um, is They'll Know We're Christians by Our Love. It was written in the 60s by then Catholic priest, the late Father Peter Schultz. It's inspired by John 13, the verse I read at the very beginning. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This has not changed. Is this a throwback song for you? Do you know this song? We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that all unity may one day be restored, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. It's comforting to know that many things have not changed, and yet some things still need to change. May God bless you this day. May you reflect on those four freedoms. May we remain one in the Spirit, and may they know we are Christians by our love.